The Catholic Church is present in almost all countries around the world and there are close to 1 billion Catholics. Among the many things closely associated with the Church, the most defining is the celebration of the Eucharist or the Mass. However, although there are many Catholics who attend Mass daily and some who attend at least one Mass in a year, not many are familiar with its rich significance and symbolism. So let's begin with the basic question. What is the Eucharist? There are many names for the sacrament. Although it is most popularly called the Eucharist because it is an action of thanksgiving to God, it is also called the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, the Eucharistic Assembly or Synaxis, the memorial of the Lord's Passion and Resurrection, the Holy Sacrifice, the Holy and Divine Liturgy, the Sacred Mysteries, Holy Communion and Holy Mass. And we have just begun. Perhaps the best and simplest way to answer the question, what is the Eucharist, is to use the words of Pope Benedict XVI from his book, The Spirit of the Liturgy. In the Eucharist, a communion takes place that corresponds to the union of man and woman in marriage. Just as they become one flesh. So in communion, we all become one spirit, one person with Christ. There are three dimensions to the Eucharist. The first is the meal dimension. The Eucharist was instituted in the context of an actual meal. All three synoptic writers begin the institution narrative with the introductory comment. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread. Now a meal is different from merely eating. As humans, we eat food to satisfy our biological needs. However, a meal involves emotions and a community united in fellowship and friendship. We naturally grow closer to the people with whom we share a meal. Dining together is also a symbol of reconciliation, mutual forgiveness, and acceptance. By instituting the Eucharist as a meal, Jesus wanted it to be a symbol and a source of solidarity, reconciliation, unity, and communion of hearts. To understand the meal dimension, we need to start right at the beginning with the book of Genesis. Human beings were intended to be the means by which the whole earth would give praise to God, returning in love what God had given in love. The Garden of Eden was in a way the very first meal to which humans were invited. They had permission to eat from all the trees in the garden save one. However, due to sin, there was a break in the relationship between humans themselves and between humans and God. Although God wanted to share the sacred meal with us humans, we wanted to eat alone. From here begins God's rescue mission or as we call it, salvation history. Right from choosing Abraham to the coming of Jesus, the entire saga is the story of God's desire to walk once again in friendship with Adam, to sit down once again with the whole of his creation at a great festive banquet. As Yahweh led the Israelites out of slavery, he established a meal, the Passover meal that united the whole nation. God declared that this act of unity must be repeated throughout the generations. Even in the life of Jesus, the sacred meal was central to his ministry. His was an open table fellowship. Everyone was equal and everyone was invited. Levi or Matthew the tax collector, the Gospels tell us, immediately followed Jesus not to the temple but to a banquet. 
just as Yahweh established the Passover meal as a sign of his covenant with Israel, Jesus gathered his community around the Passover table. St. Thomas Aquinas writes, just as food sustains, repairs and delights the body, so the Eucharist sustains, repairs and delights the soul. This implies that when we receive the Eucharist, we transcend from a purely temporal context to a spiritual one. By eating the body and drinking the blood of Christ in the Eucharist, we become united to both the humanity and divinity of Christ. The second dimension is the sacrificial dimension. The term sacrifice comes from the root words sacrum and facere in Latin, which together mean to make sacred, to consecrate, or to make belong to God. Under the old covenant, sacrificial blood was required to sanctify almost everything. The sacrifice by the high priest on the Day of Atonement had to be repeated each year. Jesus Christ becomes the unblemished Passover lamb who is sacrificed for us. He takes away the sin of the world, swallowing it up in the divine mercy. Unlike the animal sacrifices, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross needn't be repeated since he was God's son, fully God and fully human. The blood he shed covered all of humanity's sins throughout all time. The Eucharistic liturgy can be understood as a representation of the sacrifice of Jesus, bringing the power of the cross to bear in the present. The Mass is described as an anamnesis, a remembrance of the Last Supper. It's important to note that this does not refer to merely recalling a past event. Instead, anamnesis is to make a past event become present now. It helps us understand why the Church has always thought that Christ is not re-sacrificed at each Mass, but that we enter into that one moment in history when he was scourged for our offenses and wounded for our sins. The sacrifice of Christ and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one single sacrifice. In the Mass, the same Christ who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross is contained and is offered in an unbloody manner. Though the ordained priest alone can preside at the Mass, all of the baptized participate in the Mass in a priestly way. They do this through their prayers and responses, but also by uniting their sacrifices and sufferings to the great sacrifice of Christ. Sufferings once joined to the cross of Jesus can become a means for transformation. When we celebrate the Eucharist, we offer our human selves and make them sacred by giving them to God. The third dimension is the sacramental dimension. St. Thomas Aquinas calls the Eucharist the sacrament of sacraments. In each sacrament, we encounter the grace of Christ. But in the Eucharist, we encounter Christ himself, body, blood, soul and divinity. There can be no greater intimacy, which is why the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. As the Vatican II Fathers pointed out, Christ is indeed present in a variety of ways, but he is really, truly and substantially present in a qualitatively different way in the Eucharistic elements. Although the Eucharist was instituted in the context of an actual meal, the Last Supper, the Eucharist gradually was delinked from the meal context. In the Church's theological understanding, in the act of consecration during the Eucharist, the substance of the bread and wine is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit into the substance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. At the same time, the accidents or appearances of bread and wine remain the same. 
what appears to be bread and wine is now the body and blood of Christ at the level of substance or deepest reality this change at the level of substance from bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ is called transubstantiation the catholic church therefore believes in the real presence of Christ in the eucharist and not only a symbolic presence having looked at the eucharist as a meal a sacrifice and a sacrament we can say that the eucharist is beautiful and rich in meaning however the eucharist is not automatic unlike a medicine that works automatically on consumption the eucharist is an expression of faith it is a commitment to the person of jesus and his teachings so one can attend the eucharist without there being absolutely any change in the life of the person but at the same time if one attends the eucharist with devotion and faith it can be a life transforming experience i hope that you have found this video helpful in growing closer to jesus through the eucharist take care and god bless